How often do you consider using a lob as an offensive option? In my opinion, for the most part, lobs are underutilized and they're undervalued. Aside from that guy who lobs everything, most of us don't lob often enough. So we're gonna do a little exercise here that's gonna teach us when and how to lob effectively. So you and I, Kat, are going to dink back and forth. I'll be the first player to lob. So when I get a decent opportunity, I'm going to look to lob that ball over your head. At that point, we play out the point live. So if it's not a well-executed lob, you can hit an overhead smash. At that point, hopefully I recognize it and I back up to prepare for it. Now, if I hit an effective lob over your head, you have the option to run back and retrieve that lob or simply let it go. One thing we don't want to do, this is very important, do not backpedal. Too many injuries can be caused as a result. So if you find yourself backpedaling like this, that is a big no-no. Just don't do it. It's not worth one point in a pickleball match to fall down and injure yourself. So if you are going to retrieve a ball, make sure you do it safely, which would mean you drop step and turn and run after that ball. But it's not required. This is an exercise. So I will be the first player to lob. We'll start with dinking. When I get a decent opportunity, I'll try to lob over your head. That ball was a little deep, so I'm not going to lob that one. Nice try. So that's an effective lob on my part. Good attempt. Uh, and perhaps maybe your partner would have retrieved that ball if it were a real point. But that's the point of the exercise. If I can get the ball high enough over your head, the right height trajectory and the right depth, even if you do retrieve that ball, I've put you out of position and that is a win for me and my team. So let's do that one more time where I'm the lobbing player. So again, I'm looking for a good ball to lob. If I don't get a good opportunity, I'm not going to do it. Good, now we play out the rest of the points still. And if I can get another lob in here, I will. If not, then so be it, that's okay. Nice shot, it's a little too deep for me to lob. And if it's low on my backhand side, I'm not interested in lobbing. That's a little too difficult. Nice try. So a ball's a little too deep for you to effectively chase it down and return it, right? It's okay. Let's reverse roles now. So you will be the lobbing player. I am the setup player or the dinking player. If and when I see the lob go up, I have the choice to turn and run it down. Or if I can hit an overhead, I will still cooperate with you to the point where I'm going to challenge you, but I'm not so competitive that I'm trying to score the point. We're not interested in injuring each other in this exercise. So go ahead and start it. And I'm gonna dink to you, try to give you some decent opportunities to put up a lob. That's pretty good. Ball went a little deep, but now you know that maybe you just don't put quite as much oomph on it. That's the idea. You're trying to calibrate the right height in combination with the right depth. Pretty good. Oh, and look at that. You ended up winning the point as a result, right? So an offensive lob designed to get your opponent either in awkward court position or maybe an awkward body position can be a very effective tool that you may want to add to your arsenal. I suggest that it's worth practicing because not only is it an effective play against your opponents, this exercise teaches you when is a good time to lob. The more repetitions, the more experience you get seeing this ball come over, you will begin to identify when is a good opportunity to send up a lob versus when it may not be appropriate. Let's try one more. We don't know who's going to lap. So it's kind of open season. 
We'll start with the dinking, and then either player at the first opportunity may throw up a lap. Oh, you can give me a little more than that, cat. If I don't hit an effective lob, no, <laughs> that's all right. We'll try it again. If I don't hit an effective lob, you have permission to hit an overhead smash. Because this also teaches, yes. Very good. This teaches us that we have to be prepared to play defense in case the lob is not perfect. One other bit of advice here is I would suggest don't attempt the lob if you have to back up off of this ball. If I get backed up and I try to lob, that gives my opponent too much time to get into position. Oh, good shot. That's how it's done. One other thing I wanna to add to this is you want to make sure you're disguising this play. You ought to make this look like a dink initially. If I'm set up for a dink, my opponent expects a dink. And then at the very last moment, instead of hitting a dink, I'm going to raise the paddle up and get the trajectory of the ball higher over than my opponent's head. So we discussed when to lob, but we also now know how to lob. It's like a dink with a lift. So we'll try again. I'll be the lobbing player. Nice try, Cat. One more time. Here's my dink. Here's my dink. Dink again. And my lob. My lobbing motion started from the same position as my dink position. So, did you know the lob was coming? No. <laughs> you couldn't tell. Okay, then I did my job well. So if you're going to lob successfully, it's very important that you don't telegraph it. Don't telegraph it by stepping back. Don't telegraph it by taking a big wind up. Set the paddle into a dinking position and then lift the ball up and over your opponent's head. One more time. You win. Well done, Cat. Don't forget to look to lob. <laughs>